All right. Uh, I've gotten a question a couple times recently about um, moving personal forms to group forms. And there are a couple advantages. If you've seen my other videos about Microsoft Forms, um, you'll probably know that I'm a big proponent of group forms. I think they solve a lot of problems that people have with personal forms, like longevity, persistence, when people leave the organization, the forms just disappear. Uh, the problem is that in a lot of cases, you might have a power on meet flow that's bound to that personal form. So uh, while it's very easy to simply move the form to a group, what happens to that flow? Is it something, do you have to build a new flow? Do you have to, um, you know, is the flow going to break or continue to work? Let's find out. Uh, so I have here a personal form called personal wishlist form and simply asking the person to supply a gift type preference, any food allergies, and any favorite movie or book genre. So the idea here is I'm going to send this out uh, to build sort of a database of people's preferences so that I know what gifts to get them for the holidays. Now, I can build a flow, and I already have, so I'm not going to walk through this. I've got other videos on how to do this, but just to show what this flow looks like. Uh, and by the way, I'm using the, just kind of suffering through using the new uh, editor, which is starting to grow on me, but it's still not, still don't love it, but it is starting to become a little more bearable to work with. Uh, but this is a very simple flow. Basically, when the response is submitted, there's my personal wish list form, getting the details of it, and then sending an email with, uh, to the responder, with their selection. So pretty straight, simple, basic form, nothing or flow, nothing, nothing really fancy here. Uh, so just to show that this works, I'm going to go over to my form, preview it. And let's say that I am primarily looking for frivolous gifts. Uh, I am allergic to, that's it. I'm not actually allergic to peanut butter, but I'm just going to say that because that is a fairly common one. And then my favorite book or movie genre is poetry. Why not? Click Submit. And then in my email momentarily, there is my thank you for submitting. And there are my responses. Easy peasy. All right. So now what I want to do is take this form and move it to a group. Because let's say I'm actually leaving before the holidays and I want to move this to a group so that they can manage it uh, and, and take over for it while I'm away. So as I said, it's very easy to move a form to a group. Simply go to the form, click those three dots and say move to a group. Uh, but what actually happens when you do that? Now, one of the things that does happen that you need to be aware of is that the ID of the form changes. Now, what that means is that in your flow, this when a response is submitted, the identifier, that form ID that it's using. Now, in this case, I'm seeing the name of it because this is a personal form. Um, I have a lot of personal forms, but what you'll notice is that none of these are group forms. So none of the group forms that I have access to through any of the groups that I'm a part of show up in this list. So in order to use a group form, I basically need to paste the form ID in as a custom value. But just know that taking your personal form and moving it to a group will generate a new form ID. So you'll need to account for that. In other words, the form ID that it's using now, which is kind of behind this name, personal wishlist form, is no longer going to be valid. So let me just prove that to you. So I'm going to go back here, move this to a group, and I'll just move it over to the human resources group. Sure, that works. And then if I go and reload this and take it again, I'll just say this time look for recreational gifts, primarily, then frivolous, then practical. And I have no food allergies and I really love documentaries. And I'll submit that. Let me go over to our flow. Let me go out to here and it failed. So why did it fail? Let's open this up and take a look. And it failed because that, well, it's 
just has that as the, the error detail is just the form ID. But basically what it's saying is it can't find that form ID. Now I'm still kind of puzzled why it the trigger still recognizes it. This is just kind of a personal point of confusion. I don't if if the the ID changed, which I know it did, then the form shouldn't even have triggered. So that part is a little bit confusing. Uh, now, the way to fix this uh, is to simply go over to our form and in the URL for the form, somewhere along here, you'll see an ampersand, the letters ID equals, and that is the, what follows that is the ID of the form uh, or the form ID. Now you'll want to basically copy that up to the next ampersand. It'll be a long string. This is going to guess it's about 50 characters or so, uh, but basically you want everything between the equals and the next ampersand. So I'm going to highlight all that, right click, copy it, go into our flow here and I'm going to edit this and actually well, I'm, I'm going to try just because I know it did fire properly I'm just going to paste that into the get response details action and let's save this because the fact that it fired properly tells me it somehow still knows that that which form it's linked to. So let me then just go and fill out that form again. So I'll submit another response and I'll say that I'm practical and frivolous and um, chocolate. I'm allergic to chocolate and I love science fiction. Click submit and let's see if that succeeded. So the takeaway, and then if I go over to here, there are my preferences. Now, ideally, when you do move that form, you might want to, if, if, in this case, I have the word personal in the name, so not a great example. Um, but you'll probably, you may want to rename the form in a way that makes it obvious that it's now a group form. You don't have to. But uh, at a minimum, within your flow that's connected to that form, you will need to go into the get response details action and replace the old form ID with the new one uh, that's bound to that group form. Now, out of curiosity, if I go over to when the response is submitted, this is the ID of the old form. That is not the same uh, as the ID of the new form. Just to show you what I mean, those are very different, well, not very different, but those are definitely different values. There's, you know, they're the same up until this N and then they change drastically. So I can't explain, I'll be perfectly honest and say just for the sake of um, completeness, I would probably recommend replacing the form ID in both the trigger and the get response details just to be thorough uh, and save that. But in my initial test there, you notice that I didn't change the, the, the ID and the trigger. It still worked. Uh, I just, you know, I'm a little suspicious of that and, and suspect that at some point it might stop working. Uh, in other words, that, that, that URL or that, that ID may be a redirect of some kind that allows Power Automate to still find or know that that form was submitted. Uh, it just then can't match it up to get the response data but I would personally just change it. Let me just do one more test. Now that I've updated that and saved it. And we'll do one more test just to guarantee that everything is fine. And we'll say bacon. I'm not allergic to bacon and I like fantasy. I'll submit. And reload, and there you go. So that worked fine. So again, when you move that form from being a personal form to a group, um, if it is triggering a Power Automate flow, you'll want to go into that flow. And at a minimum, um, 
update the form ID that's in the get response details action. I would also recommend changing the form ID in the, in the, the trigger, um, but know that the, the question IDs don't change. So it's still the same form, it just has a different ID. So any references to the question data, the question, the response data, um, you don't need to update those. It's just the the trigger, the the actions that actually identify the form itself. But the references within the form are going to continue to work just as they did before. So hopefully that is helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, problems. Now, one thing I will note is that. This is a very simple basic form that does not have a file upload question attached to it. Once you introduce file upload questions, um, there are some other possible consequences because those have a linkage to the OneDrive of the form creator, if it's a personal form, or the SharePoint site of the group, if it's a group form. So when you move a personal form with a file upload question, to a group, then there are some other things that need to happen in order for those files that are attached to those file upload questions to get into that SharePoint site. Uh, I'm not going to touch that today, but I probably will in another video in the future, just so that I can say that I did it. All right, so hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments down below, and have a great day.